Hi everyone. Thanks for your interest and oral response to this webinar. I am Hemant Yuke, Technical Lead for Systems Engineering at DECOS, and I will be your host for this webinar today. When it comes to medical equipment, failure is not an option. From critical devices such as oxygen concentrators, lasers, ventilators, MRI scanners, insulin pumps, implantable pacemakers, to instruments as straightforward as stethoscopes, injections, and thermometers, medical equipment must be reliable. So let's get started. The agenda for today is to describe the listed topics, which are introduction to reliability, why reliability engineering, activities in reliability, new product development, reliability maturity, reliability prediction, our services. Let's quickly start with introduction to reliability. Today, reliability takes an even greater significance since medical devices designed for specific applications are becoming more expensive. It is not uncommon for cancer treatment or surgery equipment to cost a few million dollars. While hospitals may be relatively profitable, they cannot afford to have too many of these expensive products. If one such medical systems incur downtime due to failure, it can adversely affect the hospital bottom line, its reputation, and the well-being of its patient. Let's quickly start with the introduction to reliability. Let's be a consumer initially. As an end product user, we look into the features first, and then a thought comes like, how long I can use this device. So longer the life, happy the customer. Do our devices really last long? Do our devices are reliable? As a manufacturer, how we are making sure the devices last long or making the devices reliable? Reliable devices are one which does what customer wants when customer needs it. Let's go somewhat into it. How we can make sure our devices work properly? Simply by testing each and every devices. The following table shows the number of devices tests that are needed to reach a specific level of reliability with a specific level of confidence. We do have two entities, percentage reliability and percentage confidence. Let's choose my device needs 99.9% .9 failure proof. So we need to test minimum of 6.9K units, which is impractical. A common medical product validation threshold is a 95% confidence of a 95% device reliability. The number of units to be tested will drop to 59 units, which may be impractical sometimes if you consider bigger devices like scanners. So how to come over with these challenges? That's when we implement reliability assessment into the process. Before we go into the next topic, I would like to take a poll. As I could see, most of the answer is yes. Let me explain. IEC standards for safety of electro electromedical devices, IEC 60601 family, define requirements to achieve basic safety and essential performance. IEC 60601 third edition addresses reliability by stating that reliability of functioning is regarded as a safety issue and where interruption of an examination or treatment is considered as a hazard for the patient. And even FDA recommends to have a particular percentage reliability and percentage confidence for life-threatening devices. For example, emergency use injectors should have reliability of 99.999% with a 95% level of confidence. The answer is yes. 
Let us make sure that we don't understand the same for durability and reliability. Those are completely different. As we have an initial understanding, reliability is the ability of an item to perform its function under specified condition over a given period. It is usually the average length of time that a device will operate without failure. And durability is the ability of an object to withstand physical damage from normal use over a long period. This may include wear and tear, corrosion, impact, etc. In some cases, durability is also referred as endurance. Let's get to know some more aspects of reliability. We got to know the importance of why reliability and differences between reliability and durability. Let's understand what and all are coupled with reliability. As I explained, in a given time under specific condition, the probability of performance of the device is called reliability. The definition focus four important factors. The reliability of a device is expressed as a probability. The device is required to give required performance. The duration of performance. The operating conditions are prescribed. Maintainability is the probability that a unit or system will be restored to specified condition within a given period. It is a characteristic of the design and installation of the unit or system. Hence, availability or time and equipment is functioning correctly while in use depends both on reliability and on maintainability. It's, it is measured in variety of ways, but it is principally a function of downtime. Failure rate. It's a percentage of failure at a given delta time. I am trying to slowly introduce to technical aspects which will help in coming slides. We touched, touched down what is reliability, maintainability, availability, and failure rate. Before going to implementation, let us understand product reliability over its lifetime using plotted failure rate over time. A bathtub curve named for its shape is a vis visual representation of the failure rate of a product or group of products over time. By plotting the occurrence of failure over time, a bathtub curve maps out three periods that in an asset experience with its lifetime, infant mortality period, normal life period, wear out period. Let us know each of them. What is the infant mortality period? The infant mortality period as known as the early failure period begins when a product is used for the first time. It is an interval characterized by a decreasing failure rate and it starts from a high failure occurrence quickly decreasing to a lower failure rate as issues are fixed and addressed. Common causes of asset failure at this stage include manufacturing defects, installation errors, insufficient components, design flaws, and incorrect startup process. So what we can do to minimize asset failure during the infant mortality period? Run acceptance and reliability test to re-evaluate re equipment and check replaced parts of an asset. We can also run these tests every time you change design, process, or tools. What is the normal life period? This region of the curve is also known as the useful life period, and operators expect assets in it to have a relatively constant failure rate. The majority of assets will spend most of their operational life in this state. Most of these failures happen because of normal wear, human errors, overload, accidental breakdowns, or increased asset usage. So how to deal with this? Preventive maintenance is the most appropriate strategy for assets in this stage. You can also leverage predictive maintenance to maximize asset life. What is the wear out period? Assets naturally deteriorate over time. The number of failure occurrences that an asset experience predictably increase after a certain usage period. 
the wear out region in the butt up curve is characterized by this increasing failure rate trend as failure rate increases quickly before the end of asset life cycle the butt up curve slopes sharply upwards eventually this leads to the total failure of an asset not all assets reach the wear out stage for example you may retire tech assets when new technology becomes available ideally we should revise the preventive maintenance measure as the failure rate goes up how to use the butt up curve the butt up curve sets expectations for how an asset typically performs over its life cycle for example breakdowns close to the wear out period becomes more predictable based on the age and performance of an asset certain predictive maintenance techniques can catch failure before they occur this is especially beneficial to teams when assets fall in the regions of the curve with higher failure rates why we plot a butt up curve it helps to measure the reliability of assets and adopt the right run to failure maintenance management strategy before we go into the next topic i would like to take a poll i could see most of the answers are no let me explain to accomplish 100% reliability we need to test each and every samples which is practically imperfect while one can understand that no product can be 100% reliable the answer is no before our poll we came across introduction to reliability definition and failure rate plotting let's look into engineering of reliability engineering reliability is a sub discipline with within systems engineering reliability is often measured as probability of failure frequency of failure or in terms of availability applicable areas for reliability mechanical reliability this is concerned with the reliability of mechanical items software reliability this is important emerging area of reliability as the use of computers and processing devices human reliability in the past many times systems have failed not due to technical faults but due to human errors reliability optimization this is concerned with the reliability optimization of engineering systems reliability growth this is concerned with monitoring reliability growth of engineering systems during their design and development power system reliability concerned with the application of reliability principles to conventional power system related problems life cycle costing when estimating the ownership cost of the product the knowledge regarding to its failure rate is essential maintainability this is closely coupled to reliability and is concerned with the maintenance of aspects of the product let's get to know how reliability plays a role in product design so we got to know the role of a reliability engineer so how an reliability plays a key role in product design reliability of the design to a large extent is determined by the reliability task performed during the product design there have been many factors responsible for the consideration of reliability in product design including product complexity insertion of reliability related clauses in design specification competition awareness of cost effectiveness public demand parse system failure these reliability tasks include using reliability design standards or checklists allocating reliability predicting reliability reliability modeling monitoring supplier reliability activities assessing software reliability preparing critical item list and performing electronic circuit tolerance analysis reliability tasks such as those listed if performed effectively will contribute tremendously to the product design 
Once a product is in design phase, let's look into the responsibilities of a reliability engineer. We got to know the importance of reliability. And in this slide, I like to talk about the responsibilities of a reliability engineer. Reliability engineer is an engineering framework that enables the definition of a complete production regime and deals with the study of the ability of the product to perform its required functions under stated condition for a specified period of time. It characterizes, measures, and analyzes the failure and repair of the systems to improve their use by increasing their design life, mitigating defect risk, and reducing the livelihood of failures. A reliability engineer department may have various kinds of responsibilities. However, some of them are establishing reliability policy, plans, and procedures, reliability allocation, reliability predictions, specification, and design reviews with respect to reliability, reliability growth monitoring, providing reliability-related input to design specification and proposals, reliability demonstration, failure data collection, failure data analysis, consulting. Responsibility list goes on. I'm just stopping with some major ones. So how these are implemented by a reliability engineering department. As we talked about responsibilities, let's get to know the activities involved in a system design for reliability. Reliability design begins with the development of a model. Reliability and availability models use block diagram and fault tree to provide a graphical means of evaluating the relationships between different parts of the system. These models may incorporate predictions based on failure rates taken from the historical data. Maintainability parameters are other important for these models. The most important fundamental initiation causes and failure mechanisms are to be identified and analyzed with engineering tools. The most important design technique is redundancy. This means that if one part of a system fails, there is an alternative success path, such as a backup system, redundancy. Redundancy can also be applied in systems engineering by double checking requirements, data, design, calculations, software, and tests to overcome systematic failure. Another design technique to prevent failure is called physics of failure. This technique relies on understanding the physics, statics, and dynamic failure mechanisms. It accounts for variation in load, strength, and stress, leading to failure at high level of details. Possible with use of modern finite element method software program that may handle complex geometrics and mechanical creep, stress relaxation and probabilistic design. The material or component can be redesigned to reduce the probability of failure and to make it more robust against variation. Another common design technique is component derating. Selecting components whose tolerance significantly exceeds stress, as using a heavier gauge wire that exceeds the normal specification for the expected electrical current. We just brushed on the techniques. Now let's get to know some analysis method. Many task techniques and analysis are specific to particular industries and applications. Commonly, these include built-in test, failure mode and effect analysis, reliability hazard analysis, reliability block diagram analysis, fault tree analysis, root cause analysis, accelerated testing, thermal analysis, human error analysis. Results are presented during the system design review and logistics review. Reliability is just one requirement am among many system design requirements. That's a lot of data I am putting forward. Let's summarize. So cumulating the slides I presented, the, these are the key points to note when we think of reliability for our design. Reliability is a measure of uncertainty and therefore 
estimating reliability means using statics and probability theory reliability is quality or time reliability must be designed into a product or service most important aspect of reliability is to identify cause of failure and eliminate in design if possible otherwise identify ways of accommodation the cause of unreliability can be damaging to a company the application of reliability engineering methods enables a product that meets the expectations of customer requirements the reliability engineering methodology can be integrated into the standardized product realization process which provides a roadmap for successful product commercialization it shall be quite interesting to know how reliability plays a key role in new product development before that i have a poll I could see most of the answers are ongoing. Let me explain. Reliability analysis is a continuous and iterative process that spans the entire life cycle of a product, system, or process. It involves assessing and ensuring the reliability, performance, and safety of the entity being analyzed. It's an ongoing activity. Thanks for the words. Let's discuss some more new product development process. As we talked about reliability for new product development, first we need to ask at what stage we need to have the reliability integrated. Integrating reliability consideration is a critical aspect of product development across various industries. Ensuring that products performance as expected over their intended life cycle. Reliability engineering involves designing and manufacturing products that have a high level of reliability minimizing failures downtime and maintenance costs it always a wrong way of approach to have a reliability analysis once after verification best way of approach is to have it once we have the analysis done by the results always we can redesign so where and all the reliability engineer plays his role for a new product development we got to know when we needed to imply reliability techniques so how it is applicable in new product developments the successful development and commercialization of new products is critical to the long term viability of any business a key requirement is to design and commercialize a reliable product that meets the requirements of the customer the reliability engineering methodology is a powerful combinations for companies to utilize in developing products that serve customers in these markets in general a good product development process is designed to burn down risks and to manage the risk associated with turning the initial prototypes into full scale production again a focus on reliability can be the difference a practical product development process can be represented with the following flow diagram items highlighted in green are areas where the focus on device reliability are key outcomes of the activity the exact timing of each phases cannot be guaranteed up front given the variation in types of medical devices we got to know where and reliability engineer will support so what and all methodologies used i like to take you to the technology or the methodology to achieve the results the reliability engineering effort should always be treated as an integral parts of the product realization process and not as a parallel activity unresponsive to the rest of the development program concept phase the concept phase utilizes inputs from the voice of the customer to generate the best product concept and product requirements in the concept phase one can use benchmarking and gap analysis to develop a reliability program and integration plan design phase 
This phase identifies key inputs using organizational wisdom, engineering principles, and tools. In the design phase, one can use reliability modeling and predictions, D rating analysis, component selection, worst case analysis, thermal analysis, electromagnetic analysis, fault tree analysis, human factor analysis, and software reliability analysis to increase reliability of a product. After concept and design phase, I shall continue on optimize and verify phase in my next slide. As we continue talking on methodologies and its tools, next will be optimize phase. Optimized nominal and tolerance settings for key input parameters. Functional output requirements are performed. In the optimized phase, one can perform highly accelerated life testing, design verification testing, and reliability demonstration testing. Next is verify phase. The verify phase consists of testing and validating the design to ensure it consistently meets the customer needs. In the verify phase, the reliability tools that can be used are highly accelerated stress screening, ongoing reliability testing, and end of life assessment. The application of reliability engineering methods enables a product that meets the expectation of customer requirements. The reliability engineering methodology can be integrated into the standardized product re realization process, which provides a roadmap for successful product commercialization. Reliability engineering is a continuous process, which starts at the conceptual stage of the facility design and continues throughout all stages of the facility life cycle. It involves a number of different tools and technologies in the process. The goal should be to address potential reliability problems as early as possible in the facility life cycle so that cost can be minimized. We talked about tools and methodologies. Will these methods conform to reliability standards? Reliability standards play a crucial role in ensuring the safety and performance of medical devices. These standards provide guidelines for manufacturers, regulatory bodies, and other stakeholders to assess and improve the reliability of medical devices. Minimizing the risk of failure that could have serious consequences for patients and healthcare providers. Here are some important medical standards for reliability. ISO 14971 is a comprehensive standard that provides guidelines for managing risk associated with medical devices throughout their life cycle. IEC 60601-1 this standard outlines general requirements for the safety and performance of medical electrical equipment. IEC 62366-1 Usability is an important aspect of reliability. This standard focuses on usability engineering process to ensure that medical devices are designed with user needs in mind and are easy to use, reducing the livelihood of the user errors. AAMI TIR-57. In the age of connected medical devices, cybersecurity is critical for reliability. IEC 60601-1-11. This standard focuses on the safety and reliability of medical electrical equipment used in home healthcare settings, considering the unique challenge of such environments. ISO 13485. While not solely focused on reliability, it outlines requirements for establishing a quality management system for the design and manufacture of medical devices, including process and impact production reliability. It's important to note that these standards are subject to updates and revisions, and specific requirements might vary based on the type of medical device and its intended use. Manufacturers and regulatory bodies should stay up to date with the latest versions and interpretations of these standards to ensure compliance and improve the reliability of medical devices. Till now, I was walking you through introduction, definition, engineering responsibilities, analysis, application in new product developments, and tools and methodologies. Various metrics are used to measure reliability and the probability of failure, including the following. System availability. 
This is the ratio of a system's actual operating time divided by the total amount of time it should be available, which is its uptime plus its downtime. The closer to one the number is, the better is availability and, and the more reliable it is because that would be equivalent to 100% availability. For example, a device runs for 500 hours before having an issue that takes 10 hours to repair. It then runs another 970 hours before having another issue that takes 20 hours to repair. Its system availability is the total operating time of 1470 hours divided by the total time the device should have been available, which is 1500 hours. That equals to 0 0.98, meaning the device was available 98% of the time. MTBF. It's a mean time between failure. As the name says, it's the mean exposure time between consecutive failure of the component which applies to repairable items. The MTBF for the device discussed above would be the total uptime of 1470 hours divided by two incidents, making the MTBF to 735 hours. Let's know some more. We discussed about system availability and MTBF. Let's look into some more. MTTR, mean time to repair. This measures how fast a disabled or failed components can be returned to normal operations. MTTR is calculated by taking the total downtime a system experiences in a given time period and divided by the number of downtime incidents. The faster a system or component can be repaired, the lower the MTTR. In the device example, the MTTR would be 30 hours of downtime divided by two incidents equaling 15 hours. MTTF, mean time to failure. This is the average period of time a non-repairable system or component will run before it fails. This is only used for systems or parts that can't or aren't going to be repaired. It's more likely to apply to a part such as light bulbs that would be replaced rather than repaired. It's calculated by adding the total operating time before failure of several light bulbs and dividing the total by the number of light bulbs being assessed. Let us see how MTBF, MTTR and MTTF looks over a product life. For a period of product life cycle, we could able to measure MTBF, MTTR and MTTF as shown. After understanding some of the metrics in reliability, we shall make sure what we need to be prepared of. Ensuring reliability is a crucial aspect of product and system development as it directly impacts performance, safety and user satisfaction. Here are some tips to help you ensure reliability in your products, systems, or process. Get IT leadership support for reliability programs. Allocate sufficient funds for reliability testing in budgets. Set up scheduled for regular testing. Identify resources to keep systems functioning at optimal levels, such as spare parts, backup power systems, and backup of data and software. Document all reliability testing activities and compare previous reports with the current performance to identify opportunities for improvement. Conduct periodic risk assessment to identify potential threats and which could affect system reliability. By following these tips and integrations, reliability considerations into the very phase of development of operation you can enhance the overall reliability of your product, systems, and process, leading to improved customer satisfaction and better long-term performance. When looking at successes and failure in throughout the history of the medical device industry, three things stand out. The innovation and development of medical devices has brought life-changing results to millions of people. Companies and projects start with noble intents. Failure was not in their plans. The products 
and the innovations that have stood the test of time are reliable in their performance and in their ability to address the unmet clinical needs. Where and all you can look to us once you require to have a reliable product. Works with project engineering to ensure that reliability of new and modified installations participates in the development of criteria for the evaluation of equipment, develops acceptance tests and inspection criteria, participates in final checkout of new installations, guides efforts to ensure reliability and maintainability of equipment process, utilities, facilities, controls, and safety systems. Provides input to the risk management plan that will anticipate reliability-related and non-reliability-related risks that could adversely impact plant operations. Develops engineering solution to repetitive failures and all other problems that adversely affect device operations. Works with production, to perform analysis of assets like asset utilization, remaining useful life. Provides technical support to production, maintenance management, and technical personnel. Applies value analysis to repair or replace, repair or redesign, and make or buy decisions. There is an old commercial for an oil filter that simply states the importance of recognizing the importance to finding the reliability sweet spot. The message was delivered by a mechanic to people who stretched out the intervals between maintenance in order to save money. The mechanic said, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. The upfront planning and investment in efforts to reduce risk and develop a reliable product are vital to the success of the overall project and in some cases, possibly the long-term success of the company. That's all for the day. We will address all the questions you have submitted via email. If you have any additional inquiries, please feel free to contact us using the provided contact details on the screen. Kindly note that a recorded version of this webinar will be made available on our website in approximately one week from now. We will also send you an email with a link to access the webinar at your registered email ID. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.